useful into the YouTube. Okay, I'm going to move this other way. And I'm going to now talk about complex numbers. Uh, if you all have anything, can someone type on a message to to tell me that that we are we are still running this fine? Please, anyone type a message. You're seeing my screen. Yes, great. All right, we'll begin. It's 4.30 now, 21st of October, 2024. So what we are going to do, do today is this. We're going to do complex conjugate. After that, we'll do Euler formula, which is Ej theta equals to cosine theta plus j sine theta. After that, we'll do the Morse theorem. And after that, we'll do roots or C. Okay, so these are the four things that we are going to do today. Uh, we are going to do at a different speed from the lecture. So here, I'm not going to tell you the proof and say th about say the same thing that I have done in the recorded YouTube videos. That's not the point. So in today, uh, instead, we are going to, to go through maybe some examples and, and discuss it at a different speed. Right. Okay, so this is 8A.1.4. You have to look at the lecture notes. And we say that Z equals to A plus JB is a complex number. So this notation here is a, uh, Z belongs to the set of all complex numbers. So here is belongs to. And remember now we always draw the argon diagram and I say this is A here and this is B here. And therefore this point is C equals to A plus JB. And, and then we have to give names to the axis. So this is the real part of C, where C is any complex number. And this is the imaginary part of C. And of course, sometimes you should like really write it as JB, right? Positive going on top. And this diagram, now you know, it's called the Argon diagram. And we always draw this picture. And and we we can we like to to name what do you call that name this uh, vector in another way theta and this is absolute value of c which is r so you realize that z can also be represented as absolute value of z angle theta. So this is a very, uh, very in the street kind of notation, lazy people's notation, absolute value of C, right, which is the length of C and theta. So these are polar notations. To reach the same point, I can give you the length and the angle. And the angle is always what anti-clockwise or positive. And this is in radian. Yeah, anti-clockwise for positive theta, okay? And therefore, clockwise for negative theta. Okay, so there are two ways now to find the point, this guy. Let's have a concrete example. I think it is always better that we draw things concretely. This is two, this is one, theta, and therefore this is R. R is the modulus of Z, so it's the magnitude, and therefore it's a positive number only, and it's zero only when the length is zero. 
So this is 2 plus 1j. Now, guys, what is r? What's the value of r? Can someone tell me? Please, just type one. Yeah, let's, let's do this conversation. Let's have this conversation. Type r. What is r? What do you think I'm going to write here? Anybody? Plus 5. Okay. Is it plus 5? Really? Mm -hmm. Square root of 5. Yeah. Square root of 2 square plus 1 square. Because we know that this is 2 here, this is 1 here, and therefore it is a Pythagoras theorem, which is this side is equal to square root of this side square plus this side square. Therefore, it's square root of 5. Now, what about theta, guys? Theta equals to what do you think I will write here on the right hand side? So I'll write tangent theta is equal to opposite, which is one unit, over adjacent, two units. Therefore, theta equals to arc tangent of half. And what is this value? It is, so I use my calculator, 0 0.46 radian, and it is equals to 26.5 degrees. Okay, so now I can, I have, you know, so this is a revision. So z equals to uh, 2 plus 1j can be written as square root of 5, anger, 0 0.46 radian. Right, so this is uh, two ways. Now, therefore, what is z inverse? Oh, sorry, not z inverse. Z, this notation is called conjugate. Z conjugate, guys. What do you think I'll write here? 2 minus j, yes. Now, actually, when you look at this, it's, it's not very intuitive. There's no intuition. So we should look at this picture. And I'm going to use green. 2 minus j. So it's 2 here. And here is c bar equals to 2 minus j. And here is theta. And here is r. So what is the conjugate of z? It is a vector, or it is a point in this space that is flipped across the horizontal axis, retaining the same length, and theta now is minus theta. Okay, so in fact, without doing anything, I can say root 5, which is the length, angle minus 0 0.46. So the only interesting thing that is happening in the conjugate is the angle. The length remains the same. Or in the rectangular form, the plus j becomes the minus j. Okay? So this is the revision of, uh, or this is the introduction of complex conjugate. So why, why, why do we want to use complex conjugate? The useful. What is so useful about it, guys? Well, z plus z bar equals to. So look, I have a z here, I have a z bar. When I add them up, the real is doubled. Two real part of z. Okay, the imaginary part is cancelled because the conjugate, one is going up the j, the other one is going minus the same similar value of j. That's why the real part remains. What about z minus z bar? Then the real part subtracts, okay? And the imaginary part adds. So it's two imaginary z. All right. The other more interesting is z, z bar, guys. What is this? What do you think I will get here? Then, of course, you guys will try 2 plus 1j, 2 minus 1j. But this is very, very painful. Okay. So instead, what do you think I will write here? How would you write in the product? Remember, we said that. Product of complex numbers are not easily done in 
rectangular form. Instead, we should do it in what the polar form. So it is, I should write in here, root 5, angle 0 0.46, and the other one in green, root 5, angle minus 0 0.46. And the solution is, the magnitude will multiply with each other. Root 5 multiplied by root 5, 5. The angle will add 0 0.46, adding with minus 0 0.76, 0. Okay, so that's the answer. So, 5 angle 0. What does 5 angle 0 mean? 5 plus J0. That's what it also means. All right, very nice. Okay, so we now know how to do some of these useful identities. Let's have some more examples. So today we are just doing some examples to get you up to speed. Now, 1 over Z. 2 2 plus 1j okay we don't like numbers in uh numerator divided by denominator i mean we we want to see see it in rectangular form or polar form so so if you are faced with this there are a few ways let's let's do the standard way The standard way, if you are in a rectangular form, is to multiply this guy's complex conjugate. Remember, when you multiply this guy's con complex conjugate, what happens? A real number comes out. Okay. So, 1. So, this guy in the bottom becomes 1 over 5. The top remains as minus 1 over 2. And finish. Of course, you can try this. Also, okay. Right. But again, division, division is more easily done in the polar form. So 1 over C is equal to 1 over, what was our Z again? Our Z was here. Root 5, 0 0.46 radian. Root 5, 0 0.46 radian. Now, what can we draw on top, guys? What is 1? 1 is 1 plus j0. But 1 without anything, what is the angle? If we view this in the polar form, it is actually 1 angle. What do you think I'll write here, guys? Yeah, at this point. What do you think I'll write? 0. Yes. Why is it 1 angle 0? Come, guys. Let's say this is 2. Let's say this is pi over 4. So this guy is 2, but angle pi over 4. What about here? This is 1 angle 0. What about here, guys? Let's say this is 1.5 minus. I can write as 1.5 angle pi. Okay, so so guys, you must you must be able to recognize that minus one point five is actually one point five, the magnitude, right? This is r, the length, and the angle is pi. This is one angle zero because it makes anti-clockwise no decrease across the along or along the anti-clockwise direction of the x-axis, the real axis. Now, remember what we can do in polar form. Polar form is nice for multiplication as well as division. What is this? It is 1 over root 5. Angle. What do you think I write here, guys? What will happen to the angle? In multiplication, they add. In division, they subtract. Well, that's it. So these are the all the operations that we need you to to play with. Yeah, uh, where we what do you call it? Very naturally. Okay. 
Now, I'm done with uh, complex conjugate. Let's see what else we wanted to. So this is the Euler's formula. So now let's write this guy. Euler's formula. Right, Euler is one of the greatest mathematicians uh, of our time, the last three, four hundred years. Euler, along with Newton, along with, I don't know who else you, you guys know, but Euler and Newton, you should know at least. Okay, so what is Euler's formula? Mm, let's begin uh, with the simple thing first that we know. Z equals to A plus JB. We are really happy that we now know how to write. Eta, and this is R. This is A and this is B. All right, so we are always happy with the rectangular form. Remember this thing, rectangular form of complex number. And of course, we now know we can write this form. This is the polar form, which is the R, which is the magnitude of this vector. Now, come guys, if I have R, I have A, what is cosine theta? This, did someone write? Cos theta equals to cos theta is a over r. Therefore, a equals to r cos theta. Similarly, sine theta equals to b over r. Therefore, b is equals to Ah, sine theta. Agree? So we are very happy with this because you know all the so we can relate angles with the length of sides. Now notice that R is common. Can we relate this back to here? Of course. Okay, we write A as R cos theta. R cos theta. We write J B as plus j, then we write b, r sine theta. And now we can collapse the r together. This is r cos theta plus j sine theta. So this is the third form. It's called the polar trigo form, trigonometry. Which I never liked this form very much, but then we have one last form, guys. Cos theta plus j sine theta is the magic Euler's formula. So I'm going to write Euler's formula here in the next page. It's equals to using, I should say, using Euler E j theta equals to cosine theta plus j sine theta. Therefore, my equation becomes R, what I'm just replacing cosine theta plus j sine theta with this kind, right? E j theta. And actually, I mean, isn't it nicer to just write it like this? Uh, and this little angle here represents E j, right? So when I was a student, I, I'm lazy, I just write it here. But they actually, actually mean the same thing. All right. Okay. So, any questions? Then you say, why do I have, and you must know all these forms, right? Rectangular, polar, polar trigonometric. And the last form is called, so this form is called complex exponential form. Why exponential? Because two, what is this? This is eight. 
how would you write? I mean, how do how would you say it in English? Two to the what of three? Okay, if you read the lecture notes, power of is actually mm, yeah. We all say power, but it's a slang. Normally, I mean, now normally you should write. You should say something like. Mm. Yes, let's see the lecture slides. Where is it? Is it called exponential? Exponentiating? Oops. Yeah. Third power. Yeah, correct. You 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 have a lot of these words, but the whole value, right? The whole thing, phi three is power, this whole thing. The one two five is the power. So the, the correct usage is is the thing on top is called the exponent and the thing at the bottom is called the base. So the base is exponential. What is E? What is E guys? E is what? Come. E is what do you think E is? 2.71828. So it is a real number. Okay. E is a real number. E is exponentiating by a complex number. So that's why we call it a complex exponentiation form. And E J theta, the J the the the, the what do you call that? This E J theta will suddenly magically becomes cos theta plus j sine theta. And uh, the lecture notes will point to you why why this is true and the derivation is due to the Taylor series expansion. Okay? All right. So now uh, then you say is why? Why do you want? Why why we are interested in exponentiation form, right? And one of the reasons is we inherit many properties, right? Of exponentiation. We can now use a lot of things uh, that uh, exponentiation allows us to do. Okay, let's see. Mm, I'll give you one, one example, guys. Example. Z1 equals to 2ej pi over 4. How would I draw this figure, guys? Um, so, most likely you will begin with the complex plane and we know that we are 2 and we are angle pi over 4. So pi over 4 first which is how many degrees? Pi over 2 is 90 degrees, pi over 4 is 45 degrees. So we are going to draw pi over 4 here. And then we draw an arrow that is 2. So this is C1. This guy is 2. So well, this is. Now then we want to draw the second guy which is C2 equals to one third e minus j pi over three. So minus pi over three is what? How many degrees? 60 degrees. So 60 degrees is about here. The length is, so this guy theta equals to minus pi over three. And the length is about one third, very short compared to the guys on top. So this is the real of Z, again, and this is the imaginary of Z. And this guy, the blue, is C2. So what do you think Z1, Z2 is? And because I give you in exponentiation form, it's very, very easy, right? It's just simply, of course, if, if you, if you write it this way, it's even easier. <laughs> and then you say it's two third. Hmm? Isn't it one third? Hmm? Not oh, minus one third. Mm, one third, right? Malvin. I write one third. 
equals to one third e minus j pi over three. Yes, no? Raja Mohan, yes. I mean, if you draw it, if you draw it below, isn't it negative? Yeah. Oh, so you, okay. You're, you're, you're thinking, what is this, right? Minus pi over 3. Oh, okay. You guys are confused here. All right. Let's, let's have a short detour. C equals to... Oh, let's, let's, let's have a short detour here, guys. This is, let's say, 2. This is minus 1. This is theta. So this is 2 minus 1j. And when we express it, it is square root of 2 square plus 1 square angle. Angle theta. But what is theta? Theta is minus what? Up tangent of opposite, which is half. And this is equals to minus 0 0.46 radian, or equals to minus 26.56 degrees. So clear? So this z can be expressed in 2 minus 1j, or root 5 angle minus 0 0.46 radian. Clear? Net email. Right. Now, if you can follow this, remember, right? Root 5 is the length. So this is root 5. Angle minus means a clockwise direction with respect to the positive real axis. Minus 0 0.46 is 26 degrees, so this is about 26 degrees. How about the questions on top? This is one third, so the length is very short compared to this guy. Minus pi over 3, okay, j theta. Okay, so maybe you guys are confused here it's because it's one third e j minus pi over 3. So the angle theta is minus pi over 3. That's what I'm saying. So the minus sticking in front, you can bring it in. So it's j minus this value. Okay. Now, so when we are negative angle, we are doing clockwise direction. Minus pi over 3. Pi over 3 is 60 degrees. So it's minus 60 degrees. Remember that when z1 and z2 are multiplied, the magnitude multiplies. So 2 times 1 third is 2 third. The angle adds pi over 4 minus pi over 3. The answer is what? Minus pi over 12, right, guys? I think. Check. It's minus pi over 12. Okay. And of course, you guys can use the, what do you call that? the Euler's formula and say cosine what minus pi over 12 plus j sine minus pi over 12 and then when you work it out you get some answer here you can check 0 0.644 minus j 0 0.1725 so the final answer is, uh, is is going to land somewhere here, a positive real and a negative uh, imaginary. Okay. All right. So um, let's let's do some other identity, guys. 
E J theta. So this you must memorize. What is E J theta, guys? The identity cosine theta here plus J sine theta. And in fact, this this must be drilled into your head. E minus J theta. How would you write this? You must be very careful. E J minus theta, isn't it? Right. You just move the minus in front, and then now you can substitute on top. Cosine minus theta plus j sine minus theta. But we know that cosine are what? Are even function. Cosine theta and cosine minus theta is cosine theta. And j minus theta is minus j sine theta. Now you can use i or equals to j. Both will be equals to minus 1. The mathematicians use I and the electrical engineer use J. That's all. Yeah, you can use I or J, whichever. Just don't confuse yourself. All right. Now, I'm going to play with some more examples. So we have four examples today. E, A plus J, B. How would I expand these guys? Remember, E x times E y equals to E x plus y, right? Yes, so the exponential form is really nice because we can play with all these kind of identities or these kind of properties of the complex exp of exponential, see? So now this guy become E A dot E J B. And here, remember, what is E J B? E A, then now is cosine B plus J sine B. So this is the form we see we want. Okay? So now you can see in real and imaginary. So in some exam question, if I given you A and B, and I can ask you to find the real part and the imaginary part, right? Yeah. Okay. All right, I'm at five o'clock now. I wonder how many of you guys are here? Hundred and thirty-one. Well done. Okay, and maybe again I show you this thing. Okay, please tell me <clears throat> you have any requests, and and I will try to help. Law ten is the WooClap uh, code. Does the imaginary plane? Okay, let me read. Does the imaginary plane have any relationship with the XY plane? Oh, we have a question. And the answer is, yeah, I mean, the, the XY plane, the complex plane is sitting on the real axis and the imaginary axis. The real axis is the x plane, x line, and the y axis is the imaginary line. So they are the same thing, really. Pass your paper. Okay. Key concept. We are going through all the key concepts now. You realize that I'm just going through with practices and we are not doing any proof. Confusing. <clears throat> okay. You must tell me what is confusing and if you type, then I will try. Mm -hmm. Wow. 
Do we need to remember proof? Hmm. Yeah, I can't answer these kind of questions. All right, I'm going to show you who can help you, all right, guys? Go to the 8A.0 slide, which is here. Here tells you all the three topics we are doing for complex numbers. So we are now at complex exponential form. And, and when we start DFT, it's going to be very interesting. All right, and then now if you have problems looking at complex numbers, you can look at all these. I'm going to advise you to, to view Petra's one because I find Petra explained it very well. But you don't need to look or you didn't look lecture one to four. Professor Dave as well, you know, whatever, whoever you want. Oxford is very, very difficult. I find even I find it difficult to solo. So you guys can try and tell me if it is easy for you. Okay, this is Oxford. Right? And there are many, many very nice lecture notes, so you don't need to buy a book ever. I guess UHK, Lamar, Vimark, College. All right. So I, in fact, I read most of them when I was preparing for lectures for this guy. Okay, so they are very good. All right. Now I'm going to cut back. Okay. So now I have done, well, what have I done, guys? So let's always revise. So I have done complex conjugate and Euler's formula. So we can now go to, I will show you, right? I'm not going to go through the entire lecture. So the Mohs and roots of Z. I just need you to remember what is Euler's formula, what is the Mohs theorem of roots of Z. And you have a big, nice overview. And then of course, you have to go through all this by yourself and and figure it out, okay, for the proof. Now, what? So this is the number three, the D more theorem. So all these guys, right? I mean, across the years, will, will come and tell us, uh, what is it? If I'm given Z is equal to A plus JB, and then he said, find z to the power of n, where n is some integer. And then you'll be like, what? How can I do this? Because isn't he asking me to do this? Then you guys will scratch your head and try to do this. And of course, this is the wrong way to go. And and then and then what else can you do, right? Remember, oh, but we remember that if we express this as r theta, then what can we do, guys? Remember that the magnitude what in polar form the magnitude will multiply, right? And the angle theta will add in a product. Ah, so this form is a much, much nicer form to solve Zn than the top form, right? Useless, the top form. You, you will have hundreds of A's running around there. But this guy is easy. R to the power of N, right? The magnitude multiply, or the R multiply together, N of them. The angle will be right. N theta. So actually, I like to write complex numbers in this form. R angle theta. Okay? So we should write R angle theta. Now, of course, if we want to be a little bit more fancy, then, then we should write it as R E J theta to the power of N. This is z, right? z to the power of n. And this guy is r n e j theta n. So, so whenever I write theta n bracket, means this whole thing is part of the theta. Okay, now it's n theta. So this is the nice the Morse 
theorem. And N can be what? N auction, not can be, must be. Integers only. Positive or negative. Integers are fine. But it cannot be you know, real numbers and things like that. Real numbers are beyond the scope of these books or our topic anyway. Okay, let's let's have some practice, guys. So practice. C is equals to root five anger zero point four six three. Okay. So remember what what is this D? <laughs> this is our of course our two plus one j. Okay. Anyway, we are going to ask you to find z square. So z square is of course by the now you know angle zero point four six three, and of course you can do this. Then you will do this. Okay, and we are done. And of course, when z is 2, this is easy. But what happens when z is what? z is 10. Then we are not going to do all this thing anymore. We will just write root 5. 10 times 0 0.463. Finish, right? That's the answer. Of course, you can simplify 4.63 radian. Okay? So, so this is the use of the Morse theorem. Now, any questions, guys? No? All right. I'm going to introduce something very interesting. C is equals to 1 e j pi over 4. Now let's let's draw this is C. What is ZZ? Guys, what is ZZ? What do you think I'll write here? One. One to the power of n is always one. So the magnitude is the magnitude of zz is one. And the angle, guys, ej pi over four plus pi over four, right? But you should write it in this way: pi over four times two. Square, right? Two. Z, Z, Z. One E J pi over four times three. Oh, Z, Z, Z. N of them. Times N, right, guys? Now, let's draw some pictures. Move this guy out of the way. Let's draw one EJ pi over four first. His length is one and his angle is pi over four. His length is one, the angle is pi over four. Remember, this is a positive angle, so we draw anti clockwise with respect to the real axis. And then the length is one. And we call him, let's call him C1. Z2, guys, where is Z2? Z2 is one, EJ, pi over two. Z2. Now, if you cannot imagine, <laughs> think of this. Z1 is here, Z2 is here. He is moving in the anti-clockwise manner. Yeah, he's moving anti-clockwise by 
pi over 4. How about z3, guys? 3 over 4 pi is 1.5 pi. Where is 1.5 pi? So this is what? This is pi. No, not 1.5 pi. 3 over 4 pi. 0 0.7 pi pi. This is 0 0.5 pi, pi over 2. This is 0 0.25 pi. Therefore, it is here. This is Z3. His angle is 0 0.75 pi. And again, he's moving by the last by is pi over 2. Uh, pi over 4, sorry. So every time he takes a step, he's moving by pi over 4. Here. Here. So every time he moves one step, he's moving by pi over 4. So the description of this guy is Z4. What is this sequence? Xn equals to 1 ej pi over 4 n. In English, it's a what? Complex phasor magnitude 1. Rotating. He's rotating, right? Anti-clockwise. At what rate? At pi over 4 radian per sample. Every time I increase by 1, he's moving by pi over 4. He is a phaser rotating like a circle. Yeah. So this, this is very famous and this is this is for DSP it will be all important later on. Okay. When you do DFT, you definitely have to play with this sequence. All right, so that's the Morse theorem. And now I have five minutes to do the last part, which is the roots of Z. So we start with WN equals to Z. Okay, so Z is again a plus jb and again we we don't like the expression because we prefer it to be in polar form or if you prefer r e j theta or the form say pa, pa, pa. what is wn what is c sorry the question is what is c therefore w is equals to c 1 over n yeah. So when am I talking about? Let's say 2 to the power 3 is equal to 8. Okay. Or I should say. Some unknown W. What is W? W equals to 8, 3, right? So this is the root of 8, the three roots of 8. And the answer is W equals to, what will your answer be, guys? And you tell me it's 2. Any other value, guys? I'm trying to find three roots of 8. You're only giving me 2, which is one of them. Right, but then you say, hey, I don't know how to find. But you do. Here, the square root of 4 is not only 2, it is minus 2 as well. So you, you square root, you find two roots. But in 8, when you find cube root, you only give me one. Where is the other two roots? And in complex numbers, you can find them. Okay? So today, I mean, uh, uh, okay, I'll give you the equation first and we'll find the three roots of A. All right. So without proof again, let's just see the Wilbur tour. W equals to Z to the power of 1 over M. So this number is given to us, the complex number. So what are we going to do? Equals to R E J theta. Equals to R theta. What are we going to do? So now it's 1 over M. 1 over n. The answer is R 1 over n. 
Okay, so I'll draw this nicely for you. This is R. Okay, so remember Z is R angle theta. 1 over N is here. So the Morse theorem again, let us move the 1 over N into here. So here. And now the magic, theta plus 2 pi k divided by n. You have to remember this formula. k equals to 0, 2, n minus 1. Now, be thinking, what are we doing, right? <laughs> Why 2 theta? What was theta? Theta is this guy. Theta plus 2 pi k. This, this looks familiar, right? This is r. This is theta. This is r theta is equal to r theta plus 2 pi, isn't it? We move one round, doesn't matter. It's equal to r theta plus 2 pi k, any integer k, 2, 3, 4, doesn't matter because we're moving in a circle, complete circle. Once we have reached r theta, and we move by 2 pi, we land back to the same place. 4 pi, land back to the same place. So this is saying that in complex numbers, theta plus 2 pi k lands exactly at the same angle. But by De Moore's theorem, this allows us to find the other root. So if I have three root, let's say n equals to 3, I would have 0, 1, and 2 other roots. Okay, let's try for 8. W equals to 8, 1 over 3. What is 8, guys? What is 8? 8 is what? 8 is a real number. You say 8 plus j 0, 1 over 3. Ah, this is a lousy way. It's not a good way to, to apply De Moore's theorem. Remember, De Moore's theorem is like in polar form. So I write 8, what? I should write angle 0. But in fact, I should write angle 0 plus 2 pi is also okay. In fact, any k, ooh, k equals to integer, right? The same number, right? 8, yeah? And then now I can cube root it. Now, what do I do, guys? W is equals to 8, 1 third. Angle 0 plus 2 pi k divided by 3. 8 to the power 1 third is 2. So therefore, all the solutions have magnitude 2. Ah, but now it has different angle. It has. So I can substitute what? k equals to 0, 1, and 2 only because n is equal to 3. I'm trying to find the cube root. So there's 0, 1, 2. So when it's 0, k equals to 0, which is 0 over 3 is 0. So this is the first solution. The second solution, 2 angle, 2 pi over 3. And the third solution, A equals to 2, 4 pi over 3. Okay, so where are all these, where are all these guys? Where are all these roots? Let's draw. 2 to the power of 2 angle 0. He is here, 1, 2. Along the real, this is the real of C, this is 1, and this is 2. So this is the first guy, W1. Ah, sorry, W0. What about 2, 2 pi over 3? 2 pi is what? 360 degrees. 360 degrees divided by 3, 120 degrees. Where is he? He's here. This is... 2 pi over 3. And the length is still 2. This is W1. K equals to 1. So this is W1. This way, W2. Where is he? 2. Angle 2, 4 pi over 3. 4 pi over 3, you realize that it's minus 120 degrees. So this is 2. This is W3. So these three points here, these three points, I should write in red these three points 
are these three numbers. And these are the roots of the cube root of 8. Only one of them is real. The other two are imaginary. What other things must you say about them? They are all in the circle. Oops. They are all in the circle. They are all in the circle of radius 2. They are all equally spaced out by 120 degrees because it's 2 pi divided by 3. Once you find the first one, actually the rest of them will be spaced accordingly. Okay, so the Moore's theorem by roots is very easy. All you are remembering is this equation here. So again, n belongs to integer. Now, okay, let me see your messages. Why do we take k equals to 0, 1, 2 and not equals to minus 1, 0, 1? It is the same. Uh, you will take k equals to 0, 1, 2. Uh, this much easier. And actually, once you reach n, you will actually go back to k equals to 0. So it's repeating. OK, I think I'm really done with C. So in this one hour, it's quite amazing. We, we did all this. Yeah? So again, I would ask you all to, to fill this up and let me know. In fact, Right. Oops. Okay, tell me how to improve your learning. Oh, definitely, uh, this is recorded, so I'm going to extract this and, and put it up into YouTube. 